Hey everyone, welcome to Plugin Development 101 Part 4, where we're going to talk about strappy content types. Now, if you're just joining us in this video, this is Part 4 in the series. Please check out our previous videos by clicking the card above. But in this video, we're going to talk about strappy content types, what are content types to begin with, creating our first content type for our plugin, modifying content types in our code, and we're going to talk about the server folder because we're going to start focusing on our backend development of our plugin and then talk about what's next. Basically, content types are just basic fields that allow you to represent your content on your website. A great example could be just your basic blog, which will be your collection type, could be your post, created of smaller content types that represent the data. For instance, you might have an author for the author, you might have a published date for the date that the author article was published, you could have the title and so on. By the way, I'm going to link to this complimentary article that you could read about content types that was written by Maxime. It's a really good read and it will be a great place for you to get additional resources. So let's create our first content type. Let's go into our terminal in our project folder and run our application by running yarn develop. Once we're up and running, let's go ahead and log in. And here you should see our previous to-do that we created. Great, our UI is here. So let's go ahead and build our first content type. Now you might be familiar that you could go into your content type builder and create a new collection type and do it here. But this will create the collection type within Strapi, but not within your plugin. So let me show you how to set this up in your plugin. Going back into our terminal, we're going to click Control C to stop and we're going to run yarn strappy generate command. This is gonna give us some options that we could use. Let's go ahead and select content type. We're going to create our to-do content type. We're going to call it a to-do. This is the name that is going to be displayed. It will automatically recommend our singular name and our plural name. The next thing we wanna do is make sure that we mark it as a collection type because we're gonna have many to-dos. Once that's done, we're going to set no for draft and published. We just want to save and publish them right away. And you want to add any attributes. So we could do this here in our terminal, but we could also do this in code. So let's do it here. Yes, the first attribute we're going to add is name. And notice how we have a selection of different data types that we could use. Now for our name, we're going to select our string. And yes, let's add another attribute, which is going to be is our to do done. And that's going to be a Boolean, right? We want true or false. And I'll show you where you could learn more about Strapi content types. But for now, this is all we need. And do we want to add any other attributes? We're going to set no. We're going to add that model to our existing plugin. Select to do. And do we want to bootstrap the API related files? We're going to do that from scratch. So let's hit no. This is going to generate our to do folder in our content types schema.json file. So let's go open this in our code editor and check it out. So here we are in our code editor. We're gonna go to content types and now you see our new to do folder with our schema that was generated via our CLI command. And you could see that it's a collection type, collection name, basic info. Then we have for our draft and publish, we have it false. And this is everything we set in our CLI and we set our attributes here, which are name, a type string is done, type boolean, and you could add additional attributes here in code yourself. And we're going to do that in just a moment. But first, let's see if these show up in our application. So go ahead and restart your application in developer mode once it starts. Let's take a look by refreshing. And if we go to our content manager, oh no, we don't see our to-dos. What is going on? Well, we have to make sure that our content types are imported and being seen. So let's cover how to do that in the next step. So back in our content types, inside our to-do folder, let's create a new index.js file. And we're going to do const schema and we're going to import it from our schema file. Next, we're going to export our schema. Then go into the index.js file inside the content types folder. Let's import our to-do schema. 
from our to-do folder and next let's export our to-dos. Let's restart our server in development mode and inside our application, let's refresh. Beautiful. And now we could see our to-dos. We can't create new entries here, but this is not how we're going to do it in our plugin. Actually, when we're done, we're going to remove this from showing up here altogether because at the end of the day, we just want our to-do plugin to manage its to-dos. So next, let's take a look how we could add additional attributes to our to-do content type. Let's now talk about modifying content types within our code. Now, before we continue, you could search content types schema in docs and go to this models page where we'll describe all the different things you could do and get more information. For instance, we could take a look at different model attributes that we have, uh, string types, date types, number types, like we looked at before. You can also do some basic validation, like setting a required field or having a max and min length, which we'll take a look in just a moment. And as you could see they provide a easy example for you guys to see. So now let's go back to our to do schema and let's change some of the attributes. For instance, our name, we want to make sure that it is always provided. So let's set it as a required field to true. And we are also going to set the max length to be 40 characters. I'm also going to paste this for your reference here. You could also set plugin options. So currently we have the option to see our to do collection type in the content manager and the content builder. Maybe we don't want to show it at all. So let's go ahead and change this to false. And we could do the same thing in content builder. So as you could see, we have all these different attributes and options you could change in code. And I almost forgot. Let's for is done, set our default value to to be false. That way, whenever someone creates a to do, it's not going to be checked. And please refer to the article that I just showed where you could get more information and different examples all about the models, the schema, and how to make the changes accordingly. But now let's take a look at the changes we made. Let's restart our server. And currently we could see our to do's. So let's refresh and see what happens. Notice how now it's no longer being shown in our application. You know what? I want to be able to see the collection types so we could see if we're actually adding data. So I'm going to go and set the visibility to true in our content manager. So under content manager, let's set it to true. Our server is restarting. Let's refresh our screen. And now we could see our to do. So this way, when we add our to do's, we could at least do a quick test here. After our plugin is done, we will remove it. Now that you know how to do that, that's awesome. And finally, the last thing I want to show you, another command that allows you to run Strapi in console mode, where you can actually look up your content types and any additional information that you want. You can learn more about the CLI command line interface by going to the the documentation and looking at this article. And more importantly, it'll show you all the commands that you have available to you as some of the familiar that we've seen like Strapi generate that we were using to generate our plugin and some of the content types. And one of the other commands that they have here is Strapi console, which allows you to start Strapi server and evaluate commands in your application in real time. So let's go ahead and check it out. By the way, you could also run Yarn strappy help to see all the different commands that are available to you. So it's going to show you all the things that you can do. And I am too zoomed in to make sense of it, but you guys could check it out on your own. So I'm going to clear the console and I'm going to run yarn strappy console. And now we want to see all the different content types that we have available. So I could run strappy dot content types. And what that's going to do, it's going to print out all the different content types that we have, including including our Strapi application and all the different plugins that we have. And here we could see our content types for our to-do. I could also specifically look up the content type individually, and that would be strappy.content type. And inside, I'm going to paste the name of the content type that we're going to look. Click enter. And here you are. It shows all the information that we have basically in our schema. And here you could see some of the attributes that we create and some of the attributes that were created by Strapi. So go ahead and play around with it. But I just wanted to share that with you all because I feel it's a useful tool for you to have when developing Strapi plugins.
And lastly, I want to go over the server folder once again to give you a primer what to expect in the next video and give you a chance to maybe do some initial reading. Here we are in our plugin that we created. We talked about that our admin folder is basically a mini React application and our server folder is basically a backend application running within our plugin. We have our configuration folder, our content types where we created our to-do content type today. And then we have our controllers, middlewares, policies, routes, and services, bootstrap function, destroy function, and our register function, and, and the main index function that exports everything for our application to use. In this tutorial, we're mostly going to work on controllers, routes, and services. We already covered content types today. And you can go ahead and look up the documentation at server API for plugins in our docs, and you will see all the basic details to get you started about all the folders and files that we talked about, details about content types, routes, controllers, services, policies, and middleware. And what's interesting is that it's the same structure that is used in the actual Strapi application. It follows the same patterns of having your routes, policies, controls, and services, and the folder structure is very similar. So the cool part, learning about plugin development, there's a lot of similarity if you were developing with Strapi. And I think that's kind of awesome. So if you're learning plugins, you're getting better at Strapi. And if you're doing strappy customization, you're actually learning a little bit about plugins as well. And that's pretty cool. So what did we achieve today? We learned about content types. We created our own content type using the strappy CLI command. We customized our content type in code, which we saw how we could add additional validation. We also reviewed the general structure of our server folder. And I shared with you our documentation resources where you could start reading to learn a little bit more if you don't want to wait for the next video. In the next video, we're going to talk about routes, controllers, and services and take a big picture overview of what they are. Then we're going to create our own first route, our first controller and service, and then we're going to test it out using Insomnia. And the pattern that we use to create our first initial route is going to be the same pattern that will allow us to do the rest of them. So we're almost there. I want to thank you all for joining me. I know these tutorials are on the longer side, but I hope you're having just as much fun and you're learning a lot. And the best part about Strapi that it's open source. We have an amazing community on Discord where you could ask questions whenever you need help. And if someone doesn't know something like me, I don't know everything, but that is why we have such a big community because there's going to be someone there who knows a little bit more than you and they'll be able to help. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to Strapi. We're making a lot of awesome videos just like this one. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you could find me at Coding30. Thank you all and I'll see you in the next video.